Setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. The meeting is now streaming on Bookface. Welcome. I am Heather Doyle Fraser, and I am here today with Pat Buzzard. Hi, everybody. Hi. And we are talking about my new course, Writing Your Book, a step-by-step -step compassionate approach that starts and ends with your voice. Think about that. So, Pat. That's me. You. Tell us a little bit about you. You have all these beautiful instruments in your background here and um, and then comic books. Yes. And we've known each other a long time, but um, just in case some people don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Uh, well, the short answer is I uh, like these instruments are how I craft uh, somehow carve a living out sometimes uh, over the years. I've played guitar under various bands. Uh, the one that might be more well known is right there you see those that's uh the band was saving jane uh we we formed it in the late 90s and we got ended up having some radio success and touring around and had a great time uh the band is uh no longer together but we're all still pretty good friends and since then i've settled in columbus ohio uh, i still play locally and that's really how we met you know that's uh, right we, we did some uh some sharing of stages and whatnot over the years yeah. and then uh Currently, uh, you know, I'm a software developer and still a musician. So, and, a and dad, I do the and, dad stuff. And you're a writer. And then here's the, the thing, this is probably <laughs> why you have me here, is I'm a writer. And yes. uh, I, I mean, I can jump right in to talk about uh, how, like, uh, is this like, uh, I can just tell the world how awesome you are? Be like, can I just do that? Sure, you can. <laughs> so, so. Uh, you know, when you're a musician, uh, you know, you meet various people on stages and, and you get to know each other briefly, generally, like it's usually in passing, like you played and then the next band plays and like, oh, that's cool. Or I loved the thing you did. Well, we ended up getting to know each other a little bit. And I found out that you were involved in coaching and writing and things like that. And at the time I was doing a lot of podcast work and you needed some, uh, some audio work done. And, and we just talked about it and uh, I didn't know what you did. And then when I found out what you did, you were like, do you have any good stories? And I'm like, I don't know, but there's a, there, I think so. I like to write little stories, but uh, there's one that I'd like, a story I'd like to tell. And we work it out and you, and it, and it turns out if this that seems like, I don't know if it was the genesis of it, but I was one of your, this thing that you're doing is close to what we did correct like i mean very close to what we did yeah. it's like as close as you could get to what we did one-on-one -on -one, but in a group in setting yes yeah. we and we did it in person and um yeah so this this program this course that i'm running it's a six-week course and it is a live um online course so it'll be like this um and we did a live in person Right. you know, intensive situation, but I created that this course to mirror the intensive program that I have for one-on-one -on -one yeah. clients. So the, from my experience from that, so, so, so to let you know, like for anyone curious, so we worked together. I had a, I had a story to tell and, and you, your and book is a memoir, basically it's a memoir, right? It's, it's a family story, generational story. And, uh, in my particular case, the reason I wanted to tell the story, put it to print, is my family, as most families, you know, we've grown apart distance wise and we're not together as much. And when we are together, we don't get a chance to sift through those old memories. We're more catching up. You know, you don't get to retell these old stories. And uh, there was one story in particular that was really like a, a thread of my family, my, my whole life. Um, and then it, 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 it kind of came to a natural ending, like, or like a second phase of it. And I want my son and then his cousins and my family to know about this story after we're gone. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of our history and it's nothing, it's not like we discovered, you know, uh, uranium or anything, but it's just, it's a story that made us who we were. And, uh, and it's a tradition sort of came a tradition. Yeah. yeah. Of sorts. Or a, 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 a rite of passage or something. I yes. don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I wanted to tell the story and to be quite honest, I didn't think it was much of a story though. And 
you came to my house. First off, you delivered a unbelievable at a time. Like, <laughs> and it's so, isn't it weird to say that we are in each other's houses in this current climate where you don't yeah. go anywhere? You like yeah. You, or, you, you know, you wear your mask, your, your shields and everything. So, yeah. But here we were in my house and you brought giant post-it notes. Yes. <laughs> uh, which I used this day. Uh, I love them. Um, now I have, I, and I've also, I've lined my basement walls with uh, whiteboards because uh, based on that whole thing, the idea to be able to work largely and quickly and you covered my uh, whole first floor of the house in, in post-it notes, a giant, like yes. three by five or something. And you had me tell the story, but then, and, 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 and tell it with whatever enthusiasm I could generate. And then you instinctively, or I, I don't know your side of it, it's magical, but you... <laughs> You would find something you're like that's interesting tell me more about that or you know what happened when this happened? like and you kind of helped me create a narrative mm -hmm. that was just this mass of, of collective memories and and throughout over the course of i think did we was it five days i think we did i think it was yeah five five days probably five days over yeah. the course of maybe two weeks maybe mm -hmm. you know, maybe three weeks at the most mm -hmm. um we had a book like no, I still we had, had a it. we had a book plan. We, we had, had a book plan. plan. Right. We we had a book laid out, yeah. and uh, then here in, in my my office downstairs, where all this stuff is, uh, I I took those post-it notes and I just lined my walls with those in the in order because we we and that's how I would sit down and I would write every morning. I would read the outline that we worked on. And then I would just sit down and I would like, like not fill in the blanks, but like I would tell that story. Right. And because in my case, it's a memoir, I spoke in my voice, just in my mm -hmm. normal, like I wasn't trying to be anybody but me in this particular case. Um, and it was just the, I use the word speed, but I, I don't want to sound like it, like it was rushed, but there was a, such large chunks of momentum that you kept grabbing that I became excited about telling the story. Yeah which then carried me through because like after we, we, we did the, the, the initial outline, the, the, the setup of the book, that it, it's up to me. Like I had to get up every morning and write. And though, like I helped you set up your practice, right? Your daily writing practice. Um, so I have those, the, the, those really um, short, but uh, thought provoking writing exercises that I, that people, when I give them to them, sometimes are like, oh, do I really have to do this? And I say, yes, you really have to do this. Well, it's, it's a funny thing uh, is if you're going to be a writer, then what you shouldn't complain about writing, you know, like, <laughs> it, you know, so you gave some reading and some writing yes. uh, exercises, yeah. which got me going, opened up my brain a little bit. Uh, uh, and it, and helped you to um, I think I mean the point of one of the points of those writing exercises is to help you forge a really strong bond with your project. Correct. Um, That's because yeah. right, and when you have a strong connection to not only the project but your why for doing the project, when you get into those places that are a little bit messy and a little bit crunchy and just a little bit not great, that foundational um, touch point that you have around your why and um, your emotional connection to the project makes it very difficult to let it go. And that's what we want. We don't, we want, if you wanna write a book, we want to get the book. We don't want you to stop halfway or a quarter way or three quarter way. We want you to- Tell the story. Get tell through. the story. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that's obviously different about this course is that I'm not working one-on-one -on -one and I'm not, you know, asking specific questions every single second of, you know, like, tell me more about that. But what it is doing is um, providing the scaffold for, um, you know, those big ideas. Like basically what I was getting to when I was asking you those questions was, what are your big ideas in this book? And um, what are the themes and different things like that? And so I've created this course um, that has a lot of interaction and partner sharing and also um, interaction with me um, going back and forth. I'm doing live coaching during. So if you're a person who is like, hey, me, 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 I want some help, then guess what? You're going to get it. 
Yeah. Um, and I've also set it up so because I'm going to have the first, there's two classes a week at, for six weeks. And that helps to build that momentum that you were talking about. The momentum um, is, is build that, um, like that intensity, that, um, uh, like that power behind it because you have a little success and then you feel like you want more and then you want more and then you are pretty soon you're two weeks in and you've been writing for 14 days. Right. And so that the two weeks, the two classes a week help to create that intensity. And the first class is going to be more of a teaching class where I'm providing information and help with the scaffold and doing experiential activities in the class. Mm -hmm. And then the second class of the week is all coaching Q and A. So if you're a person who wants some more, um, of my time, then that's your time. Like that is totally your time. Um, and you just let me know ahead of time and we'll put you in the queue and there yeah. you go. And we'll, you know, dive in. Additionally, if that's still not enough for you, I also have um, an option where you can purchase a four pack of one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good way to get even more like one-on-one -on -one time. But the way that I've set it up, this course, you should be able to have your writing practice totally solid by the end of six weeks. Have your very clear knowing of why I'm writing this book, who I need to be to write this book, mm -hmm. and who my ideal reader is, which is very important. Right. Um, and also, you will have that book plan that you and I created. And the level that you go down to is dependent on how much work you put into it, but you could have an extremely detailed um, book plan for yourself by the end of this six weeks so that you can either already be writing at the end of the six weeks or you, I mean the actual book, or you will be um, ready to go like boom. Uh, so, so two things that I, you know, that you just, that you talked about, Momentum is, is un, undescribable. Like, you know, it, it, it's being able to get a couple of victories right away. You know, you know, you start noticing like, this is a story. Now I'm excited about telling my story, whatever that is, whether it's coming, you know, however it's being written, but the, the, the book plan, you know, uh, you mentioned you can, at the end of six, six weeks, you could be either writing your own book or, you know, prepared in, yeah. the, in the level of making it. And something that I, I, I found myself doing two things about the book plan. One, you're never, in, you're like some, some mornings I'd wake up and I'm on chapter three. I'm like, I don't really feel like writing about chapter three. So I could, but, but maybe in my mind, you know, the, the chapter seven story is a little bit heavier. So I just joke, look at chapter seven and re recharge on what we talked about yep. and dive into that. The other thing, and this is where I don't know how anyone, if you, I'm sure you have a plan, but by having it being tactile for me that I could write the when you live with that for a few, like I would almost recommend, this is just me, my personal experience. You do the, you do the book outline or the book plan and then live with it for even a week and make amendments to it. Like, look oh, at yeah. like, you know what there? Yeah. It's a target. <laughs> it's not an, it's, it's an agile document. So it, it's wonderful it is. Yeah. To sort of like, you know, you, so you throw it together. It's like throwing pot and clay on the wheel. Yeah. It's not a pot yet. You know, you, you kind of like get it up and it's working and then let it, let it be a thing for a little while. And then once what you condense it, you add little notes and that by, and for me being able to just walk past it, walk past it, walk right. past it, uh, made a huge difference. Well, and I think as a musician, you know, you and I can relate to this really easily, but um, even like for, we can put this analogy to music, we could put it to sports, you can, when you know the scales, you can improvise. When you know the basic thing of the song, you can put your, you know, finesse on it and you can make it your own. When you know the skills that you need to play soccer, then you can be a, a maestro in your, in soccer. Right. Um, so that's what that book plan does. It gives you yeah. the foundation so that then you can be so flexible. It's like people don't understand. No. They, people think like, oh, that feels too constricting. No, what this does is give you so much freedom yeah. because like you just said, you can write 
anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, that is the, in the book mm -hmm. and you can always add to it. And I know it sounds yep. like, you know, it seems like obvious, like, well, of course you can, but it's not that easy. You know, yeah. when you've just got one long word document that's endless. That's and, overwhelming, and, right? Like, overwhelming. Ooh, how do you take a bite of that? <laughs> you take... no. And then how do you skip forward and skip backwards? Like me personally, yeah. I don't, I just, yeah. I just move away from it. I'm yeah. like, I know oh, apparently, too much. apparently I'm not a writer. Too not much. Writer. Not going to do it now. Yeah. And also, you know, there was a couple things that, you know, uh, advice you gave me and I've still fulfilled it is like, you know, not to say that everyone's work isn't original, but there's probably a book out there that is somewhat in the vein of what you're writing, yeah. whether it be the voice you're using, be it the subject matter, be it something. Take, if you want to be a writer, and this is, I think this is a Stephen King loose quote, if you want to be a writer, you better be a reader. Mm -hmm. you, know, know, you know, know what you like, know what entertains you what keeps your attention and then keep keep those points in mind as you're doing the actual storytelling well and you're really developing and honing your own voice just like right. just like you know a in, in music you're developing your own voice literally your own voice but in writing it's the same thing mm -hmm. um and even i mean i I would imagine that some, you know, athletes would argue same thing when you're watching a gifted, um, you know, player of any sport, like, oh, that's so his move or that's, you know, or her move or whatever it is. Right. Um, they didn't invent throwing the ball or hitting the, hitting the puck, but mm -hmm. how they do it is their own. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's your voice is very important. Um, now, another little thing that I wanted to talk about that I think is a little different about this course um, is that when you're doing something like this, this is reaching out of your comfort zone for, mm -hmm. for many people, um, for probably all people, because writing a book is not something that's easy. It's just not. And um, so you're going to have those little inner critic voices come in. Everybody does. It's impossible not to because our brains are built that way. Right. <laughs> so um, being able to use some compassionate practices to help with that. Right. Um, and I infuse those. And I know that we did some of that together too. Um, you know, sort of doing temper, temper yourself, you know, yeah. sort of, yeah, don't giving yourself some grace. And like, of course that, that one was, you know, you were writing a memoir um, and this course is for people who are writing nonfiction, um, can be informational, it can be self-development, self-help, um, or memoir. Those are all like genres of, you know, nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're doing that, you're sharing something that is really important to you. Right. Um, it's a message you want to share, or it's a story you know, from a time in your life that you want to share. And sometimes that can bring up some vulnerabilities and, you know, it's natural to have those feelings. And so instead of trying to motivate yourself with like, oh, why can't I just get it together and do this? It's not that big a deal. How about, oh, of course that would be hard. You know, like this is, this is big stuff. I haven't shared this before on this level. Yeah. I need to take a step back and what would be the most gentle thing I could do for myself right now that would also help me to continue. So, um, you know, I think that people need to know that it's not kind of like we're building momentum, but we're not doing like power through We're you no, know, no, that's, yeah, I, 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 I get so excited when we talk about it, you know, um, it's not speed. It's not rushed. Mm -hmm. It's a natural, it's a natural movement. cadence. Yeah but it doesn't, there's no sitting back, like there's no second guessing, I guess, is it like, mm -hmm. just keep moving forward at the momentum that, and, and retaining the momentum we have, but don't like race to the end because it's not about getting to the end. Right. It's, it's about. And it's a, it's a journey of self-discovery, honestly. I mean, I, I've, I've always said that writing a book is like the best self-development you can possibly do. I will tell you 100%. I have, I have, I have, you know, used that quote that you, that you used, just used uh, with mil uh, everyone I talk to that's like, they're thinking about writing a book. And I said, you should. They're like, but I don't know if it'll be good, any good. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You will be better. At the end of the process, you'll be better in tune with something. Like you'll be a better version of you. 
when you've gone through the process. And that's the one thing that I, I is the unexpected benefit of this. This yeah. isn't just, I'm going to hopefully one day have a book to hand to my son and he hands to his son or whatever, you know, I came out of this better and, and with a better understanding of my self mm-hmm. and my relationship is around me. And it's that, that's something that I think everyone should write a book. I really yeah. do. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you know, you know, did I write war and peace? No, no, I didn't. Not, There's I, only I, one war and peace. That's right. just it. You know. And, and as a musician, I've never written Thunder Road either, you yeah. know, but I still play guitar. It yeah. doesn't matter. It's okay. So, yeah, uh, we all have our unique voice and talent and our unique story to share, whether it's a yeah. memoir or just a, uh, or a like, you know, informational self-development, self-help type book. Mm-hmm. It's still a story. It's still your story. Yeah. See, now you want, make, want me to write another, I feel like I want to write another book. Yeah, well, once you start, it's hard to stop, right? <laughs> but I got to finish mine now already. You do. You do have to finish it. That so. was one thing. I, again, if anybody's watching this, once you start writing, you get excited about writing. It, it, it is any like, okay, I'll back it. So when we were first talking and you're like, you have to develop a steady writing practice, at least, at least four days a week, consistent. Uh, a day or two off is probably good for your brain. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. And you told me, like, I'm going to warn you, 5 a.m. is probably when you're going to do it. Like, it's hard not, it's hard to find a time any other time other than 5 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I'll find time. And I couldn't. I couldn't find any other time other than I was, I was rolling out of bed at 5, fingers on keyboard, no later than, 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 than 5.20. And I say that like I, like I w- thought I would hate that, but I, it was the best part of my day. It was the best way to start your day. Yeah. Like I felt there was a refreshing that came with it. I, and at the time, like I was a full-time gigging musician. Like I was out late, you know, doing, playing shows. I'd roll yeah. out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to write. And it was wonderful. And, I, and I'm going through it now trying to get back to doing it five. Like, because mm-hmm. there's no other time. No other yeah. time that works for me personally. Well, whatever, yeah, whatever that morning time is, is often the best time. Um, it doesn't have to be five, but if your time is six or whatever it is, seven yeah. doesn't really matter. But morning time is often the best time just because one, there's not a whole bunch of people that are, you Knock know, on your brain. Hey, 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 I need this from you. Um, and there's not the whole day of uh, like, worries needs wants do's all those things yeah happening in your brain so you're pretty clear yeah and you know there have been lots of studies that say you're the most creative in the first three hours of the day um i would agree with everything you just said and you know like if you write later in the day then it's like a super bonus it's like whoo i found some time (laughs) Then I get and some more. And, and that, that was the phrase. It's, I, I, I need to find the time. And we, once your day is going, there's no time to find. Most, most of us, our mm-hmm. day is completely filled. Yeah. You know, and, and so it doesn't matter if it's a working out. It doesn't matter if it's you know, spending time with your children or whatever it is to make your own meals. You don't find it. You have to create the time. Yeah. Like it, it's already there. And for me, for being staying creative before my day got away from me, it, yeah. morning was morning was the best time and for me personally it ended up being 5 a.m <laughs> and anyone that knows me knows that i don't like it enough i'm not an early person but it, it works it works yeah it's magical well when i wrote um 40 weeks and also the when i co-wrote um the book with my husband freedom um that was my definite i mean i it wasn't quite 5 a.m but it was like 5 45 for me yeah and um there's some, like you just said, it is a magical time. It seems like, you know, for me anyway, I could connect really easily with my voice. And, and I had a spot that I wrote in that looked out on my backyard. And so, and we face the backyard face East. So Mm -hmm. I could see the sunrise in the morning, which was just amazing. And I saw so many sunrises when I was writing that book. Um, And I hadn't seen that many, honestly, before that. (laughs) Right. You, you know, it's, uh, I, same. 
you know, most most sunrises I've seen have been on. I'm still up from the night before. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I, I got to see a lot of, a lot of that. And, uh, I, I'm looking forward actually to get like, now I'm maybe you're re-inspiring me. Uh, I'll do it again. I'll do it Ooh, again. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to get this book finished, you know? Yes. Like, so I, I don't know if I said, but I'm, you know, so the manuscript's done. Uh, the first, first draft's draft done. done. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. doing the second draft right now. And, uh, and again, it's that whole get to know your voice, but also be, you know, the, you and I worked on the set on the first draft and there's a vulnerability that makes for the best words on the paper. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're talking about, that making the time to write is like an early morning when I'm not distracted and you can kind of like scrape away all that, whatever it is, the curmudgeonness in my, me or whatever, but you get to that like real words come out of you. I think it's part of it is like the expectation of what you, who you need to be to do all the other things, but you need to be someone a little bit different to write that book. Yes. So yeah, that for me, that's, that's where it happens. That's the, mm -hmm. the, the you know, cause at the end of the night, I'm, I'm like, I can't sit down and write it at midnight. There's just no. nothing there. No. Yeah. But I think it's a, uh, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good, uh, the process uh, I'm glad we're talking about it because it, it, it it's re-reminding me how important it was to me at that time in my life and right. now. You know. Well, that was my secret motive for asking you to get on here with me. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> well, on that note, I think um, I'm going to end this. If you have anything else you want to add, Pat, I'm... Um, I would or... say the... You know, it, the, you know, this is just you know from what you've described, and I, I read the description of the uh, of your course. It sounds great. Me personally, and I, and I have nothing in this, by the way, not one thing in this. Mm -hmm. um, your personal touches, like one on one, if you, if you get some momentum and you think you've got something, that would be something that I would 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 want to in, invest in, and is having you on a personal level, like, you know, like a one-on-one -on -one coaching kind of thing. Like, like doing that. the, that like four pack of that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I thought there was like some type of, I don't know if it's a la carte or if it's a different package or I don't know how you have it on there, mm -hmm. but, uh, that, uh, especially like, it just puts a sharper point on what you're trying to accomplish. It, that mm -hmm. was, that was some of the most important time for me. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the course starts October 6th. It's six weeks two classes a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm going to put the link um, down on the, in the comments and um, check it out. And you should I, check it out. You should, you should do it and, and, and write a great book. Pat says you should do it. So, <laughs> you know, the right thing to do, do right. that. Okay. Thank you so much, Pat. Anytime. Thank you very right. much. Bye.